How's it going, Sha? It's not bad. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I uh, um, I I like when I'm humbled when I don't when I realize I don't know the answer to something. I think it's good for like uh mental health and personal development. Um, especially if you're like like I I go through moments where my ego is very high, and mm-hmm. I need like every now and then like moments of like nah, be you regular. Um, <laughs> and it, it keeps me good, you know. Uh, right. Uh, like uh, my my uh, son was reading yesterday and he asked me a question that I feel like I should know the answer to. And I definitely don't. Um, he asked me, how do I say this? And I don't know how to say it. I don't know if it's uh, the word is uh, either. It might, I'm, matter of fact, I'm not even going to say either because both of mine might be wrong. Um, I I believe it's chasm or chasm. Oh, OK. Okay. And I was just saying it out loud and I didn't know and like the more I said it, the more none of them sounded right. Like is it chasm? Is it chasm? Okay, hold on, let's see here. Um as in like a like a big crack or a big Yeah. Okay. This says I'm looking up it says cat chasm with a K in the pronunciation section. Okay. Even though, yeah, let me, I'm going to see what it, chasm is what chasm. Google says. Okay. Yeah. So I couldn't figure that out. And then like, we looked at each other and like, my son was like, let's just ask uh, Google. And I was like, that's the answer. But like, mm-hmm. There was a time when we didn't have this. I feel like we should be able to figure this out on our own. And then we wasted mm-hmm. like an hour um, <laughs> just saying it in sentences. And we got further and further away. Uh, I don't know what that says about me. I feel like I should know that word by now. You know, There are a lot of words that I can't say that I know and I know what they mean. And I actually need to say them sometimes. And I can't say, here's mine. I'm going to spell it. Let me make sure I can spell it correctly. Uh, Okay, here we go. This is the word. Spelled like this. V-U-L-N-E-R-A-B-L-E. V-U-L-A? Nope. V-U-L-N-E-R. Vulnerable. Right. When I go to say it, it is like vulnerable. <laughs> I sound like a motorcycle starting up. I don't know <laughs> what, but I think I, I, I say instead of vulnerable, I say yeah. vulnerable. I, I say V U N instead of V U L. And okay. so I go vulnerable. And so it's like, what, what's that? And I'm like, I'm a I'm a 50 year old woman who can't say. <laughs> we trying v- vulnerable. vulnerable, and honestly, I feel I I feel very open <laughs> when I when I realize <laughs> I can't say it. <laughs> it makes me very emotional. <laughs> it's okay, Sha. Okay, we in this together. Okay. Uh, um, but like, yeah, because like it just it's re- like so it led like a little rabbit hole because like then uh, my daughter remembered that. While I understand how to, while I know how to spell it, I don't know why Wednesday is spelled the way it's spelled. I don't know if anyone does. And yeah. when when you spell it, do you have a little trick to remember how to spell it correctly? Uh, yeah, I remember the day that I misspelled it in front of a lot of uh, girls that I liked, and the the embarrassment of that has drilled the spelling into my head correctly. Ever okay, since. well that'll do it. That'll so, do yeah. it. That that's my trick. Yeah, that's a- <laughs> <laughs> I remember a deeply sad memory. <laughs> Yo, uh, imagine just thinking of that every time you got to say that word, and you just stare off into space for a couple of seconds. Yo, straight up, just- baby, fourth grade. That shit hurt. <laughs> <laughs> was in the library. That shit hurt. <laughs> Surrounded by all the knowledge, I'm over here making book recommendations. It was beautiful. Mm-hmm. I was in the zone too, because I was looking dope. Like I read and shit, because I did. I read, a, I read more books than the other kids, 
and I was getting kudos. Then we had to do the sign out sheet on when uh when I'm gonna return the book, and I couldn't spell Wednesday. And they're like, "Yo, you don't know how to spell Wednesday?" Because they noticed that I w- I wrote out the full date of when I was gonna return the other books, uh-huh. but for Wednesday I only wrote W E D because I didn't know what to do from there. Right. You know? And they asked, huh. and I and they called my bluff, you know, and I didn't know how to do it. And I, I went home. I studied that shit for like three hours. I was like, Yo, well, never again. I mean, it's uh. It's just, it's a tough one. Yo. Because you don't, because you don't say the D. You don't say that first D. When, it's Wednesday, right? Yeah. So are we all just saying it wrong? Or, it's possible. But then, and this is how I remember, I say Wednesday. Right. <laughs> when I'm writing it, wed. And then, because, uh, you know, I know the abbreviation is W-E-D, and I'm like, all right, well, then all the other weirdness comes after I do a W-E-D. After I do <laughs> W-E-D, any collection of these letters will get me to Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, get the feel, point. I feel like that is why people call it hump day. Not because it's in the middle of the week, but because <laughs> no one knows how to spell Wednesday, and they're just like, put hump day. Yo. Yo, let's start a petition. Make Hump Day officially the new Wednesday. I hate Hump Day so much. I don't don't know if I hate it or if I just hate when people use it. Okay. Like, it feels very of the office kind of thing. Okay. Like, I never hear anyone say it seriously, even though, of course, it's a jokey term, but I never hear anyone say it more consistently than I do a coworker. Right. Who's like, happy hump day. And I'm like, why? <laughs> why are you doing that? We're grown. Stop that. Stop <laughs> that. You're older than me. Cut that I out. <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't been funny in 40 years, Mark. Yeah, just okay? stop it. You Let know? it go. And- yeah. And any other time I hear someone say hump day, they are playing it up because they are kidding so yeah. much. They're joking around and being ridiculous and sarcastic with it. Except for this one person who's like, happy hump day. <laughs> and I'm like, please stop. Low key, now, uh, now that you say that, like, that like jarred a memory of me not liking hump day for like a solid year. Yeah. Yeah. Because you uh, in an office. Well, I work in retail, and mm-hmm. that's why it got me mad because the manager would be like, "Happy Hump Day," and I'm like, "Yo, my day starts on my week starts on Wednesday, okay?" Right. Like, I just came like this ain't the middle; it's the start of my week, okay? Like it's the mm-hmm. middle of your week because you get to go home, <laughs> Mister Manager, on Saturday, <laughs> Sunday, okay? Yeah, I'm, it is. I'm here. It is. There is a, a certain amount of privilege to the term Hump Day. Yeah, it assumes like, you have the, the weekend. Yeah, w- which honestly, for a lot of my work history was not really the case yeah yeah huh i didn't even think about that but yeah that also definitely plays into why i just you know i don't know um and i don't know any of the nicknames for the other days i I don't think they bother me as much whatever those nicknames are i don't even know what they are like i don't know any of the. i don't know i mean like i feel like taco tuesday is was a thing for someone somewhere. Right. And, but now people just say, ah, it's talk. There's a calendar. Someone has a calendar. Um, someone or had a calendar at my job that had like every day labeled, um, every day of the week labeled with those little nicknames, just really? like taco Tuesday and hump Wednesday. And, uh, I don't know, thirsty third, you know what I mean? Just like Friday, <laughs> end of the, you know, party Friday, like, and just all of these things, a uh, catter day, catter day instead of Saturday. Look, Catter-day. I love my cat. I love my cat. But internet people, we y'all got to calm down with the cat shit. And I know we're like 20 Catter- years in, we're 20, 25 years in on loving cat shit on the internet. And it ain't never going to stop. And I get it. I watch a lot of cat videos, but only because I have a cat and I get it now, but I wouldn't push it on anyone the way the internet has pushed cats onto us. And one (laughs) of the things that they pushed is the term catter day. That's terrible. (laughs) I know. And and if you 
put in hashtag Catterday in any social media engine, search engine, and oh, be prepared to brick your phone with all of the responses that you will get <laughs> of things labeled Catterday. Catterday is yeah. trash, yo. Like, real yeah. talk. Y'all could so, do better. Uh, so you mean to tell me I, I got hump day and catter day? Get out of here. Mm-mm. Get yeah. out. That that really says something that, like, the more I think about it, as trash as, as cheesy as it is, like, mm-hmm. Taco Tuesday might be the best of them. <laughs> I guess so. But that's like, only because you like tacos. Yeah, straight up. Tacos is carrying it. But that's rough. Like, I'm really thinking of that. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Know. Yeah, I don't. I don't even know if it's based on like a. I don't know wh- where where they come up with it and and why and what sticks, but it's all very annoying. It's Was all... Sunday Fun Day? Is that the one? Mm, that feels right. Sunday Fun Day. Right. But what's fun about Sunday? That's when you have to do all your homework. Look, as much as <laughs> as old as I am, right around the t- right around six p.m. on a Sunday night. Yeah, I start getting. Real anxious. Like, did I do all my homework? <laughs> every every Sunday since school. I have not been in school since 1991, maybe. <laughs> and I don't know, because I barely went then. So 90, to be safe, 1990 was yeah. the last time I was consistently in school. And I am still triggered by, look, when I hear the ticking of the 60 minutes theme, <laughs> it's about I to be am done. like, I am panicked. Like, oh, shit. Did I do everything? (laughs) Do I need to iron my outfit for tomorrow? Let me gather myself. Like, I am really. (laughs) (laughs) So they do a number on you. Oh, my God. (laughs) I I really feel for you, Shaw. That that hurts. Yeah, yeah. You know, I also feel for myself as I still have it. I thought it would go away one day, but uh, no, uh, apparently not. That is the future. Nope. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> like I've had dreams like where like I wake up and like, yo, did I? I didn't study for that social studies test. Yeah, yeah. I'm still. I am definitely still dreaming about school. Straight up, brother Adrian. Yeah. Social studies, like that shit, like is is drilled in me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yo. So I am definitely like, I just, I'll just start pacing on a Sunday evening and I don't know why. And I'm just like, there's something I'm supposed to be doing. And it's like, yeah, sit down. <laughs> you you don't up. have homework. But I mean, I, I know just because I was not that great at doing my homework. So I know in life, I must be dropping the ball somewhere. And I'm sure I need to find that ball before Monday morning. Just in general. <laughs> I'm like, I, I'm screwed up somewhere. I need to get, get it together. <laughs> if uh, someone has uh, Shalay was life homework, reach out to us, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Share the let answers, us, okay? Yeah, please let us know if you also go through this. This can't just be. <laughs> I mean, that that... 60 minutes is triggering, right? Yo, yes. real talk. I, yeah, I hate that yeah. noise. <laughs> I get so stressed. I hate it because they would start playing the commercials like, right. like during the show before. So, like, man, I was enjoying that football game. You ain't have mm-hmm. to do that to me. I was in a great place <laughs> mentally. You know? And you had to remind me that I've been slacking off, watched two games in a row, and now I got to go yeah. do homework. Yep. Oh, my God. <laughs> that is not the memory I want. No, I'm sorry to bring that to you. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> I don't even remember how we got here. <laughs> <laughs> and I had good memories too this week. Like uh, yesterday, uh, Gabby and I just discovered uh, that HBO, uh, the app, uh, has mm-hmm. uh, School School of Rock, uh, Schoolhouse oh, Rock. Okay. So like we were uh, listening to all those like Saturday morning jingles they play. Oh, wow. Okay. So we were jamming out to that. Like uh, three is a perfect number. Right, um, yeah. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? What's your function, yep. Hell that's yeah. Good. We was barring yeah. up with the kids. I was like, this is fire, <laughs> you know? You don't know what you're missing. These are these are classics, you know? <laughs> so I felt great. Because they're like, it, 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 like, those, I was explaining to my son that, like, uh, I was, like, six or seven when my parents uh, bought their first house and, like, I got my first bedroom. Mm-hmm. Um, but we still had tenants. You know, we had a tenant in the basement, tenant on the second floor. And, right. you know, this was the first place we bought. So it wasn't like the biggest house either, you know? Mm-hmm. So like, 
And Saturday mornings, my dad worked like 80 hours a week at a bodega. My mom was going to school and working as a social worker. So like Saturdays, they slept in. And essentially it was like, yo, don't break shit. We're going to wake up at like 11. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so I had like free reign in the house. So yeah. like I woke up early on Saturdays to watch mm-hmm. every cartoon on the big TV. You know? Right. And I had a I would wake up at like 6:30, watch cartoons, a ton of these school, school of rock joints. And I knew that at eight o'clock I could I could go into my parents' room and ask to go use the microwave um to make oh, myself wow. a microwavable pizza. And oh, wow. so like and this was a big deal for a lot of reasons. One, they trusted me not to burn the house down. You know? Sure. Uh, two, um, the microwave uh, was uh, bought afterward. This is before, like, microwaves were standard built into your kitchen. So uh-huh. the microwave was in the boiler room slash washer dryer room in the because basement. it was huge? <laughs> Yo, it was huge. It was downstairs. Through someone's apartment. Right. So, like, at 8 o'clock in the morning, I would just walk through somebody's house. <laughs> like, I, don't, I didn't give a fuck if they were sleeping. They was up for their day, whatever. Six-year-old <laughs> me was like, yo, I'm out here. I need to, I got I got permission to make this pizza. Pardon me while I walk through your crib. No, I'm not doing this for laundry. I'm here to make a pizza because it's important. <laughs> I ain't ask shit. I ain't knock doors shot. I would just walk through their crib, go inside the boiler room, make my pizza, straight up, hop back down, walk right through. I ain't, I ain't say hi. I ain't say bye. <laughs> like, <laughs> every Saturday at 8 o'clock. And oh, like, my God. I would talk. I asked my dad about it years later. He's like, yeah, I'd have to explain that to, like, fucking tenants. They're like, yo, yeah. on Saturdays, my son's going to walk through your crib. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he like I, he like I don't know how to tell him no. He's a good kid, so I got I got to give him some wins. This is one of the wins. <laughs> so if you all got you got, I, I, it's not in the lease, but it's just part of the agreement. Uh, <laughs> yo, and oh God, I would get upstairs. I'd fucking eat a pizza, chill as hell. Uh, the the, the to, Totinos, whatever that. That yeah. that uh cheap brand of pizza is that like yeah. to this day no, warms no. my heart when I have it. Totino's is not a cheap brand of pizza. Totino's kept this country going. Amen. For decades. Yo. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> Yo. Totino's is the only thing that kept me and my sister from killing each other on many summer afternoons. <laughs> oh, I, I loved it. The combination uh pizza it had pepperoni and sausage. Oh, sure. I remember that. Straight yeah, up. I, I remember I, you, that. It had yeah. the blue, the blue, the white, the yellow box, but it had the blue uh, uh, square over combination. That's how I knew it was combination. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Pepperoni was red. Sausage was purple. Right. We you know? just got, we just got pepperoni uh, and they're in tiny little cubes. <laughs> yeah. Tiny little cubes, <laughs> pepperonis. I don't know if there was anywhere near meat. And, um, <laughs> and so we would have to split one. And, um, you know, our parents were out, out at work. And so, you know, it's up to me. I'm the taller one and the oldest one. And I have to make sure it's an even cut. Yeah. And look here, man. I love pizza. <laughs> and so does my <laughs> sister. So we, I mean, she's right here on my shoulder, just like, hey, 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 You know, like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't know what they do in the UN, but if it's not slicing up pizza in perfect ass <laughs> for me and my sister, they ain't really working. You know what I mean? <laughs> 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 well, it's all yeah. about pressure negotiations, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and it, we could be fighting in that morning, and then we just have to stop fighting, walk into the kitchen together. I start the stove. I cook the thing. We stand there. We wait for it to cook. I take it out. I cut it in half. I look at her. I present. She's like, that's fine. We each <laughs> take our half on the plate and then go back into our bedrooms. Like, we are still, we still hate each other. But... <laughs> We will eat these pizzas, <laughs> these oh, half yeah. pizzas, and then come out and watch like uh, our our stories, you know, either <laughs> soap operas or um, you know reruns of like the monkeys and the fly and uh, the flying nun or something like that. Hell Who yeah, did, you know things like that. <laughs> I love it. 
<laughs> See, there's happy memories too, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. When I stayed over at my cousin's house, uh, my cousin Jasmine only liked the cheese ones. And mm. so I would make her get the combination one too. But before we cooked it, I would pick off all the sausage and pepperoni and put it on mine so I could have double and she okay. could still get cheese. You right. know? So yeah, there's techniques out there, baby. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Don't let the Tatinos people limit to what you want. I want I mean, a double pepperoni, were to eat, double sausage. If I were to eat one now, I would start dancing. You know how you <laughs> dance when you eat? I absolutely would start dancing. Yo, that's what Gabby gets me when I'm sad. <laughs> You're like, it's, it's not going to fill me, but like the no. nostalgia makes me happy. I mean, it's literally the size of like a saucer. Like yeah. it's not even, I don't know how it seemed so huge. And granted, it probably was bigger in the 80s or something. <laughs> now it's like the bottom of a mug. You know, it's not even the top part, but the bottom of the mug size. But I tell you what, I would eat the whole thing and just dance the whole time. Just like, I got my pizza. Like I would be so happy. <laughs> They bring me joy. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get into the news. You know, now that we're oh, in yes, a good yes. place. <laughs> yes, that's yes, right. Absolutely. Uh, coaches uh, fired after 22-year-old assistant girls basketball coach impersonates a 13-year-old JV player. Uh, our, our Alicia Boykins, 22-year-old former assistant coach on the Churchland JV girls basketball team in uh, Portsmouth, impersonated a 13-year-old player who played for the truckers. The student athlete was out of town at a club basketball tournament. The parents told the news. The JV head, head coach, along with the uh, head coach of the varsity girls basketball team, have both <laughs> been fired as well. Uh, sources tell the news that the varsity coach was encouraging the behavior during the game. Uh, the game was on Saturday, the 21st of January in Suffolk against uh, Nan Samond River. Uh, video obtained uh, by the news sources show Boykins wearing the number one jersey for Churchland, actively playing in the game. Uh, the child's parents uh, said she played under the student's name without permission. <laughs> okay. I was really, I, I saw this and I was like, I'm, I'm not sure I understand what is happening. But <laughs> now that you've read it, let me make sure I have this straight. A 22-year-old mm -hmm. who was the head coach for the junior varsity team. Oh, she was an assistant coach for yeah. the junior varsity team. She suited up <laughs> <laughs> as a 13-year-old yep. and played against other, I'm assuming, 13-year-olds. Exactly. Oh, my God. Stuff of legends, baby. How did no, I mean, I, isn't, isn't she grown? Oh, I'm looking at video of it now. Yeah, this bitch is grown. <laughs> yeah, yo, she big, yo. Like, she ain't even yeah. like a short one, yo. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Look, she is, I can't. This is, wow. <laughs> you know what gets me tight? The game was close. <laughs> <laughs> you over here, you got a 22-year-old playing against 13-year-olds, and this game is tight? But then again, I mean, the 13-year-old that she was, uh, replacing or subbing in for however they decided to frame it was <laughs> also um, uh, like at a camp, at a basketball camp. Yeah. So, so like apparently she, she's good. Yeah, for sure. 100%. So I'm but. guessing that maybe all of the 13-year-old girls, are, maybe all of them are 22-year-old women. Have we <laughs> thought about that? <laughs> Can we check everybody else? Because if it's this easy for this woman to play, like, I don't yeah. know. Let's just look at the paperwork. Especially with, like, every coach, like, agreeing with the idea, too. Right. Like, yeah, like, no one will notice. What nah, is that? We do it all the time on our team. You know what I mean? Go for it. <laughs> My point guard is 35, you know? Why not? <laughs> How you think we win all the time, B? Look, I mean, I've already, look, Young women are blossoming faster because of the the hormones in the chicken. I already, I, I believe that <laughs> wholeheartedly. <laughs> oh but my God. I don't know. I don't know. And you're not done growing at 22. I've known people who didn't fully hit puberty until they were in their early 20s. Fair. So it's a, I mean, it's a perfect storm of wildness, but <laughs> I still, it seems like a bad idea, especially if you don't look like the woman, the young girl, which I don't know if this woman looked like her or not, but 
that feels that just feels real wrong. Yeah, this is not the move. Like, uh, you know, uh, shoot to shoot, ball is one a ball. I'm all about that, but <laughs> you're gonna play it after work. You know, like, yeah, yeah, shoot or shoot, but they also maintain their identity. <laughs> shoot or shoot as themselves. <laughs> oh, man. In other news, uh, Black Americans are much more likely to face tax audits. Uh, oh, don't tell me that. <laughs> 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 That's the last thing I need to hear. <laughs> I might, I might owe him five dollars. I'm not trying to hear. <laughs> oh man, uh, black taxpayers are at least three times as uh, likely to be audited by the Internal Revenue Service as other taxpayers, even after accounting for differences in types of returns. Each group is most likely to file. A team of economists has concluded in one of the most detailed studies yet on race and the nation's tax systems. The findings do not suggest bias from individual tax informants agents who do not uh, (laughs) know the race of the people they are auditing. Okay. Uh, They also do not suggest any valid reason for the IRS to target Black Americans at such high rates. Okay. Uh, There is no evidence that the group engages in more tax evasion than others. Uh, Okay. So Mm -hmm. instead... The findings uh, document discrimination in the computer algorithms the agency uses to determine who is selected for an audit, according to the study by the economists from Stanford University, University of Michigan, University of Chicago, and the Treasury Department. Uh, Some of the discrimination appears to be rooted in decisions that the IRS officials made over the past decade as they sought to maintain tax enforcement in the face of budget cuts by relying on automated systems to select returns for audits. Those decisions have produced an approach that disproportionately flagged tax returns with potential errors in claiming of certain tax credits, like the earned income tax credit, which supplements low-income workers' income in an effort to alleviate uh, poverty. Those uh, tax returns are more often selected for audits, regardless of how much in old taxes the agency might recover. The result is wow. audit rates of Black Americans that are between three and five times the rate of other taxpayers, even when comparing that group to other taxpayers who claim the EITC. Okay, so <laughs> so they got these tax credits, right, to yep. help people who don't make a lot of money, to help them write off a few things. And then they go in and they audit the people who use those credits Yep. Um, because those are the ones that they think are uh, – they ha- they may have more errors. Gang, gang. Okay, look here. Just because you make less money doesn't mean you know less math, first and foremost. Um, uh, also, these are admittedly people with less money. Right. Why Why are we going after them? Yo, if they, if someone who is making a relatively small amount of money compared to the um, money that is out there in the world. If one of them makes a mistake, fucking eat it. Eat it. Eat that shit. Yeah. What's going on at the top? What's going on with all those folks who somehow figure out a way through magic, uh, you know, uh, to not pay for shit, not pay for it. All the extremely rich people who have full depart hidden departments, (laughs) <laughs> whose job it is is to figure out how to keep them from paying all of their taxes. Yo, just like shit and shell companies and whatnot. Get out of here. Like just strategically, like even if you don't like care about the racial aspects of how fucked up this is, like, yo, if your job is to find the money that's lost, why are you looking for people that don't got money to begin with? Like, exactly. <laughs> it's just crazy. Exactly. Like, yo. <laughs> it, it, it's so wild. It's like, yo, they don't have their they are asking for credit because they don't have a lot of money. So let's leave them alone. Yeah. How about the people who do have a lot of money? How do yeah. they how do they get to keep all that money? If these people down here who don't have a lot of money are still having to pay out a lot. Yeah. What's, what's going on on the other side of the room? Why don't you go over there and check them out? Oh, this is such bullshit. Yo. And I didn't I didn't think about them doing it through like claiming certain tax credits. I really thought that it was just like they were going by zip codes. Mm. You know, what what are the zip codes, the zip codes in particular neighborhoods 
Like right. you learn, a, you know, a lot based on zip codes. A lot of shit is parsed out based on your zip code. And I thought that's how they were doing it. Just like, well, we'll do these zip codes and, oh, well, you look at that. It seems to be a lot of black people. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. You did all the zip codes for college park in Atlanta. Where it's like, get out of here. <laughs> Yo, it don't yeah. make Listen, I understand that you didn't pick them. Cool. But like, if you're an auditor, like how many black people did you have to see before you was like, yo, we should talk about this. Like uh, <laughs> all these, yeah. the machine just keeps sending me black folk to audit, you know, like it should have been like, it, it took a decade for them to like say, hey, like there's a, there's a problem here. And I mean, that's uh, yet another reason. And I hate to harp on it again, that I'm not big on this AI. Y'all act like AI ain't going to be. <laughs> fucking racist Word. who built the ai come on now <laughs> like, let's go let's come on y'all think a robot can't be racist <laughs> y'all got all this imagination but y'all don't think a robot can be racist <laughs> that's what the imagination is Word? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh uh. man, that's awesome. <laughs> 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 they can drive cars on their own. You don't think they're gonna have problems right, with well, certain you people? Th- you don't think they can figure out <laughs> they can't go, huh? Seems like all the broke people are the ones filing for this credit. I bet that's where all the come on. You don't think a you don't think a robot will go? It's over here. See, come on, get out of here, get out of my face. Stop playing with me. Oh man! Finally, uh, Johnson and Johnson scheme to avoid cancel lawsuits just fell apart in court. That's right. Uh, over the past few years, corporations facing thousands of lawsuits have increasingly turned to a legal tactic that was literally a joke in the office, uh, declaring bankruptcy under a different name. As the, le- as the legal theory goes, it doesn't matter if the company is actually insolvent or in need of debt restructuring because the quirk in Texas laws allow companies to perform a divisional merger in which two new companies are created, a one to keep all the productive business assets and one to absor- absorb the litigation liabilities. The latter company mm-hmm. then declares bankruptcy and uses the bankruptcy process to delay, reduce, or wholly eliminate the claims against it. This so-called Texas two-step, quote-unquote, uh, looked to be the future for most uh, mass torts, particularly those involving uh, car uh, synergens, until Monday when the third U.S. Uh, Circuit Court of Appeals pumped the brakes. Uh, the uh, LTL management, uh, Mark Johnson & Johnson's effort to avoid liability For its talcum-based baby powder products, tens of thousands of people have sued the company, claiming it knew these products contained asbestos that caused women to develop ovarian cancer and uh, (laughs) mesothelioma. I I didn't. I didn't know that's what it. (laughs) Oh shit! This it had asbestos in it. Yo. Okay. I didn't know. I'm not a powder person, so I didn't know. But yikes! That's crazy, yo. (laughs) They went for it. The uh, the uh, J&J created two new companies that offloaded all liabilities into one called LTL Management and shifted all its other assets into another called J&J Consumer Inc. Uh, the first company, LTL Management, then swiftly declared for bankruptcy and obtained an injunction against lawsuits involving J&J's talc product, preventing alleged talc victims from moving forward at all in their cases, much less recovering damages. Meanwhile, the second company, J&J Consumer, just kept on making money. Okay, and so J and J is headquartered and incorporated in New Jersey, but it created the new companies under the laws in Texas, and then filed bankruptcy in North Carolina because North Carolina is in the Fourth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals, which has a low standard for determining if a bankruptcy is filed in good faith. I see, gang, but gang. then wait, oh, the bankruptcy court for the West. Western District of North Carolina noticed some rather obvious problems with the filing. Um, For example, the employees of the debtor are all employees of Johnson & Johnson Services, Inc., a New Jersey corporation. Okay, don't put that, (laughs) you dummies. (laughs) And the debtor's assets involve no operation of a business in North Carolina. Come on now. They got lazy, yo. (laughs) 
And so the judge um, in charge transferred the case to New Jersey, where it should have been filed in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, and so, wow, that's insane. <laughs> gang, gang, yo, this is crazy. There's a lot that it did. Like, this is a long, uh, this is a very long article. And it's it's from Slate, so it it goes real deep into the law shit. It's written for people who are in law school, but um, <laughs> but yeah. So uh, basically, I guess the Third Circuit Court was just like y'all bullshitting. Yeah, straight <laughs> <It> up. Ultimately, <laughs> was just like y'all are bullshitting, and we ain't nah. Y'all nah. need to pay all this. Pay all that bread, okay? <laughs> yeah, you got it. Bang. Stop oh, trying to slack wow. off, okay? You gave people cancer. You can't pay them fair money. What Come on, Johnson a, see, and Johnson. This is what I'm talking about. Look at what this company did to avoid paying people that it was hurting. Yeah. Um, it, it went through all of these changes just to avoid paying because it lost one time. And it's like, we won't do it again. And it's like, no, it turns out you will. And yet <laughs> these robots are still targeting black folks. In, in the IRS. Like what? Like this is in, insane. Check on these people. Look Seriously. At the, look at all this shit that they did. Check on the people with the money. Because <laughs> they are shady boots. They are. <laughs> they are. Oh my goodness. <laughs> if you would like for mm -hmm. us to design uh, black mm -hmm. AI uh, robots that go after Johnson & Johnson um, <laughs> <laughs> review all eight books, okay? Oh all, boy! All you gotta do is like subscribe we, to the we, show. We should design uh, AI that not only like targets um, the one percent, like in financial dealings, but also uh, their cars should turn on them. All mm. of the appliances in their big houses should turn on them. I like, <laughs> like that. Every, I want AI to turn on the one percent. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Real talk. Like every time, like way. you, uh, you lie on your taxes and AI catches you, your your Bluetooth speakers should turn on randomly a hundred times that year. <laughs> okay. And play something that you have not programmed it to do. Straight up, just a random song you ain't picked. Just okay? screams, just full on screams. The sounds <laughs> of people screaming. Oh, I yeah, like that. That's what you. Should, yeah, that you can't turn off. Like everything that's programmable. Like Alexa should turn on you. Siri needs to turn on you. All of them. All of them need to turn on you. <laughs> <laughs> your ways should disconnect once a day. Absolutely. You Send you I mean? in the complete wrong direction That's in it. your self-driving car. That is, at, I mean, first <laughs> off, if you have a self-driving car, you already got a little bit of a death wish. You ain't really trying to make it. You ain't really trying to make it. <laughs> you ain't trying to be here for a while. <laughs> if you are a Apple and Spotify listener, we appreciate your ratings. Four stars. You trust the AI. Come on, B. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Have you not been listening to us for this whole week? Right. Come on, B. See it, baby. Five stars. You know the AI can't be trusted, okay? Uh, admittedly, you still got no choice because we don't know how to program AI, but at least you understand that it's going to go south. Yeah. That's all we ask. Awareness, baby. You right. Know? <laughs> if you have any articles you want us to cover, please DM us directly on Twitter or Instagram at Silky Jumbo or at Gastro Monte. With all that said, uh, I am newly uh, now concerned about AI, Gastro Monte. Hmm. Always with, constantly informing the very, me. Yes, the very skeptical Soleil with her. <laughs> Soleil Extremely <was> skeptical. <laughs> this has been <laughs> uh, AI focused. <laughs> Episode of the War Report. Watch your back. <laughs> Watch your back, y'all. Peace. <laughs>